Am I doing something very, very special for Batman's 75th anniversary this year? Well, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bat Year. That's right, to mark Batman's 75th anniversary and to mark Batman's 75th year of, well, existing, I decided to go all out and just review a shit ton of things Batman related for this entire year. I mean, I went all out. I got my Batman Scully, I got my Batman t-shirt, and I even got my Batman robe that I got for Christmas, so I'm really going all out this year. Now, before I get further into this video, and even further into Bat Year, um, I want to say this. Not every single one of my videos this year is going to be a Batman video. In fact, I actually made a schedule for you guys um, as to how I'm going to be formulating my videos this year. Um, which was a very big change up for me because, as you guys really know from what you've seen in my videos, I don't really plan my videos out and I don't really have a plan when it comes towards making my videos because, you know, do I really look, do I really look like a guy with a plan? I'm really not. I just do my videos at the spur of a moment, but I do have a lot to say about my videos. I do write down some stuff in advance. Well, at least very recently I've started doing that, where I write some stuff down in advance about movies that I'm talking about in my videos. But I never really planned on... I don't really plan on reviewing the movies that I review, that I do decide to review. Um, they're just spur of the moment things. So to go from that to doing a whole formulated plan, it's a very big change up for me personally. I think it will help out in the long run because my videos will be a lot more organized and I'll have, I'll be sure to have a video after you guys, um, at least majority of this year. And that's another thing I do want to stress about that year. I will not have a video out every single week this year. That's really impossible. I mean, some stuff is going to happen, some stuff will happen, but I am, will try my utter, my absolute best to get a video, guys, uh, to get a video out for you guys this year. Um, I know I'm making it sound like these videos um, take a lot to do. I mean, they really don't. I mean, I'm just in front of my camera talking about videos with some, you know, written down stuff about what I'm going to be talking about, but. Um, in a way, it does, you know, take a lot. I mean, I have to set this all up. I have to, you know, get all my thoughts and stuff down. I have to write it down. And I have to, you know, give my opinions on either a movie or whatever um, to you guys in the way that I think is, you know, the best way possible. Um, but this year, I, like I mentioned, I formulated an entire plan for you guys um, as to what my how my videos will be released this year. Um, and I hope we will have a lot of videos out for you guys this year, as opposed to last year. I did put out a lot of videos last year, but not really compared to 2012's amount of videos. Um, that's pretty much my main New Year's resolution this year for you guys, is to get a lot more videos out for you guys. There's not going to be any weeks where I'm like, you know, I don't really feel like making a video. I'm just going to get off my ass and make a video for you guys, even if I don't feel like it. Um... So that's why I formulated this entire plan, and I'm going to show you guys my plan off right here. Now, the way this is going to be done is that I'm going to be releasing two Batman-related videos a month, so that in total this year will amount to at least 24 videos about Batman, whether they're a review of a movie, animated movie, a comic book, graphic novel, whatever. It's going to be a Batman-related video. And I'm also going to be bringing back Lego Batman or Lego tutorials. Yeah, remember when I used to do those? I completely missed out on them. I didn't do one in all 2013. I could have sworn that I did at least a couple, maybe two or three. But I missed out completely. I did not do a single Lego tutorial from 2013. And that sickens me because... The whole time, while I wasn't making uh, any videos on the LEGO tutorials, I've been making just a bunch of them. In fact, I'm actually going to show you that right now, just to prove you guys. This is um, some of my custom LEGO minifigures for you guys that I've been working on, as well as just some ones that aren't custom. They're actually store-bought minifigures, but here you go. Oh, quick glimpse. I don't want to show you guys off. I don't want to show everything off to you guys, so just a quick glimpse. Um, but let's get to my schedule. So the, so the schedule is going to be like this. Two Batman videos a month. One, a, either a review of Batman movie, animated uh, TV series, you know, cartoon, whatever. Um, or And also a Lego tutorial. And it will go like this. Now, one week... Um, at the starting this month, um, I didn't make a video here, which is make video on anything. Um, so I'm skipping that week. Um, so th this week was just planning for 
everything else in the year. But this week, the week that we're on right now, is Review Something Batman. Well, um, I really put in here just all Review Something Batman, but it will either be Talk About Something Batman or Review Something Batman. It will vary, it'll differ. Um, so this week is Review Something Batman, and then it will revert back to make a video on anything, either talking about a movie or, you know, reviewing a movie that's not Batman-related, and then it will revert to a Lego Batman tutorial. So it will be like a bi-weekly Batman video that you guys will be getting, um, either one week it's a, a review of something Batman or the Lego Batman tutorial, and then um, after the Lego Batman tutorial, it'll revert back to make video on anything, and then review something Batman, and then make some video on anything, and then Lego Batman tutorial. Now some weeks, I'll have to double up on a review on uh, make a video on anything, because there's going to be a lot of big movies coming out this year, like The Amazing Spider-Man 2, uh, the Lego movie. That's actually my most anticipated movie of this year, believe it or not. Not Amazing Spider-Man 2 or Guardians of the Galaxy. The Lego movie is my most anticipated movie of this year. I'm totally not kidding about that. But um, there's going to be a lot of big movies this year. So those weeks will be um, like a make, make a video on anything. Um, but the, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to do two straight weeks of make a video on anything. And then it will go to like a review uh, something Batman related. And then the next week will be a Lego Batman tutorial. And then it will go back to make a video on anything. And then review Batman, review something Batman. Then Lego tutorial and then make a video on anything. Those will be certain weeks. It will switch up here and there. I hope it'll, you guys will you get pretty used to it. Um, so there are sometimes here and there, depending on if a big, you know, movie is coming out this year, I will have to do a double, uh, two straight weeks of make video on anything so I can review that movie that is coming out this year. Um, but then you'll get two straight weeks of Batman videos. So that's really, really good. And I'm pretty sure I'll do more than one Lego Batman tutorial um, a week. Maybe I'll do two Lego Batman tutorials a week, depending on how many minifigures I have made. I have made a bunch, so I can probably guarantee I'll make two um, uh, Lego custom minifigure tutorials a week. But I have, you know, no absolute idea. Um, I do have a lot, and I could probably do... You know, some weeks double Lego Batman tutorials, but not every single week. You'll get some weeks where there's too many figures, and some weeks where there's, you know, not too many figures, okay? So that's about, that's the schedule. Um, you'll get, I hope, hopefully you guys will get used to this. So it's a bi-weekly Batman video every single month. Um, you're going to get and make a video on anything. Um, now this week... Last week would be, would have been a make a video on anything. So this week is a review of something Batman. The next week will be a make a video on anything. And the week following that will be a Lego Batman tutorial. And the week following that one will be a make a video on anything. So that's the way it's going to be. And you can, you know, again, tell how it's going to be, you know, uh, the next, um, the following weeks after that. So... Now that I'm done with the schedule, already almost 10 minutes in, let's start talking about what the title says I'm going to talk about, which is Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, it only makes sense to start off that year with a movie that's I'm going, not going to be out until next year. It's really smart, I know. But let's talk about Batman vs. Superman, which is a movie I was very excited for way back in July of 2013 when it was announced. And... To be quite honest, I am really, really disappointed now the way this movie is being done. Um, and that's really ironic. Again, I was one of the many people, one of, probably one of the only people who came to the defense of this announcement when it was made way back in July of 2013. I was so excited for this movie. I was really, really excited for this movie. I was so happy that they were going this direction. It seemed like the next... Logical step. I was so happy that they were going in this direction. But now, seeing as how we've gotten many announcements and many rumors that popped up, I am really dreading this movie because it really looks like it's going to suck. Like, it seems like the sucking part is really outweighing the really good part of the movie. And I'm just really dreading this movie. I mean, it could be really good or it could be really bad, but it looks like it's going to be really bad as opposed to really, really good. And seeing as how people already didn't love Man of Steel to begin with, that's not really that good. And this could put immediately put a wrench in, you know, Warner Brothers' plans to do their own DC Cinematic Universe. 
I cannot say, I really can't say that with a straight face. You know, their idea of a DC Cinematic Universe is the worst bullshit I've ever heard of in my entire life. It's just ridiculous saying that. Um, can't say it with a straight face. Um, but if this movie does horribly, it will completely put a wrench in their, um, uh, their ideas and their um, DC Cinematic Universe and will just completely stop it all together and it could probably lead to not another DC movie being made for a very long time. Like, remember when Batman and Robin came out there wasn't, like, a Batman movie for eight years? Well, imagine that, but, like, way, way, way worse. Like, not another Batman, Superman, or whatever movie until, like, 20 years later or, or whatever. So this movie could easily suck and I'm about to talk to you guys about the reasons why I'm really really dreading this movie now I mean that's really sad to say because I was so excited for this movie but there's just been so many rumors and just so many so much news that has just really kept me from enjoying the possibility of this movie being really good um and I'm still looking forward to it it's still like my most anticipated movie of 2015 which says a lot because we have Avengers 2, Star Wars 7, so many big movies coming out this year that Batman Superman is my most anticipated. It says a lot. But um, one of my main problems with this movie so far, and it could be a rumor, but um, it's not really confirmed whether this is the title of the movie or not, but the title that everyone seems to be going with with this movie, even you know producers at Warner Brothers and whatever, is the, the title Batman vs. Superman which kind of gives away a little bit of the plot as to, well, Batman's going to fight Superman in this movie, Superman's going to fight Batman or whatever, which I so, 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 so do not want them to go that route. And I do not want to see Batman and Superman fight and have a huge brawl in this movie. And if I, if I have a problem with that, you're probably wondering why I didn't complain about that when this announcement was first made back in July 2013. Well, th they said that they were really scrounging around to find something in the DC comic books to find. They were really looking hard for something to find. They are really looking for something um, to use to announce this whole Batman vs. Superman um, film. Um, and I just sort of assumed that they picked this, um, that they picked the whole line from The Dark Knight Returns, you know, I want you to remember the one man who beat you line from The Dark Knight Returns. Because they were having a hard time finding something that was really recognizable to announce this movie. So I just assumed that they picked that line to announce the movie and not really because it, had a, it was going to be a part of the plot, but just because they, they wanted to use that to announce the movie because it's very iconic. People will recognize what it is. Um, I didn't know that they were going to use that to announce that they're making a Batman Superman film, but it's also going to have them fight each other because that's not what I want at all. I don't want the whole movie to be a big build up to Batman fighting Superman, and I want the movie to be constant fights between Batman and Superman. If I, if the closest thing that I want to have them fight is just have them bickering. Um, I, I, like, as much as I love the fight in Batman, uh, The Dark Knight Returns, both the graphic novel and the two-parted animated movie, um, I don't want to see them fight. I don't want to see a recreation of that, um, scene. I mean, as much as a big fangasm moment it would be, I don't want to see Batman and Superman fight in this movie. I want to see them work together. I want to see them, you know, you know... I, I want to see them work together. I want to see them, you know, fight the villains and whatever. That's why I love these two characters because they're two characters with completely polar opposite views on pretty much everything, but they can agree on one thing and join together to fight crime and to, you know, ring in justice. That's why I love these two characters so much. That's why I want to see these characters so much on the uh, big screen and in live action form because they're such polar opposite characters and them working off each other is the best thing of why these two characters are together. It's the greatest thing that you're going to see from these two characters being together, you know, they're bickering and they're poor, you know, opposite views on everything. Um, I don't want to see them fight. I don't want to see them fight because then, you know, like if they fight early on in the movie and then they have to go fight like a big villain at the end of the movie, how awkward is that going to be? Oh, hey, Clark, I'm sorry I kicked your ass, but Brainiac is destroying Metropolis and Gotham at the same time. You mind lending a help, old friend? Sure thing, Batman. I'll get my super suit and I'll fly over to Metropolis and you'll just get it and go to Gotham City. It's going to be really awkward. Like, oh, like I kicked your ass, but help me out? No, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, just don't have them fight one bit. I especially don't want it to be a big build-up to a fight. And again, it's going to be awkward because what's going to happen when they inevitably do get to a Justice League movie? It's like, oh, hey, Clark, I'm sorry I kicked your ass, but we need to 
pull all of the big characters in our universe together to go fight Darkseid or whatever, or Doomsday or whatever. It just doesn't really add up. It doesn't really make any sense, you know, at all. Um, and I just never really believed in seeing Batman and Superman actually fighting, actually fist fighting, getting into an actual, like, all-out brawl. It just doesn't make, really make any sense to me. The best way, the way I always have thought about Batman and Superman is that they're kind of each other's only friends. Which, you know, they're kind of like brothers to each other. Like, yeah, sure, they may not, um, you know, agree on everything, but they still do care for each other. And if one is hurt, they will, you know, avenge them. They will seek out justice for them. You know, I always saw them as, you know, they respected each other very much. Even if they didn't show it all the time, they definitely really did uh, respect each other. And they were each other's friends. And a part um, where I really do get that is in... Um, the episode of Justice League, I believe Unlimited, Hereafter, where Superman, you know, spoiler alert, seemingly dies, and Batman goes to his, you know, uh, memorial, and he says all these nice things about him. That's the way I always saw their relationship. You know, Batman definitely does respect Superman, but he does, just doesn't want to admit it because he's a stubborn asshole. But Superman is always like, eh, I know you respect me. That's the way I always see it. Like, they're kind of, they're brothers, where sometimes they'll hate each other, but, you know, inevitably they still, you know, care for each other, and they don't want to see each other get hurt you know I don't want to see them fight because that just disproves that entirely and like the Dark Knight Returns as much as I love it as much as I love it as a Batman story it completely paints Superman in a horrible horrible way because Superman that he's just a wacky he's just there just to be controlled by the government he's a hor it's a horrible Superman story but it's a great Batman story which is kind of expected I mean you're reading a Batman comic book you don't root for Superman you root for Batman it's a Batman comic book it's a no brainer that you would root for Batman not Superman and also, I may have made a claim in the past that Batman would kick the shit out of Superman in a fight easily. And I just want to clarify that I no longer think that, and I apologize for that claim because... Uh, let's be honest. If Batman and Superman were to really get into an actual fight, an equal fight, that means with Batman having no kryptonite whatsoever and just Batman himself against Superman, Superman would kick the shit out of him. Easily. I mean, he fucking ripped the head off of a Kryptonian in, in Man of Steel. I'm pretty sure that he can kick the shit out of a mortal being in a bat suit. It just makes all the sense that Superman would beat you know, Batman. I mean, the only reason why he didn't win in Dark Knight Returns was because, one... It was a Batman story, so Batman was going to win by default. I mean, you don't have Batman lose the big battle in a big Batman comic book. Also, you know, again, Superman in that comic book wasn't at all how he is in the actual comic books. He wasn't as powerful. He was completely just the absolute caricature of Superman. He was dumb. He was just a, a horrible Superman. Also, you know, he had, Superman, Batman had kryptonite, Batman had that iron Batman suit, and he had help from Green Arrow. If Batman, if he took all that out of the equation and had Batman not have kryptonite, uh, not have any help from any other uh, character in the DC Universe, Superman would kick the shit out of Batman a million times over. That's just, it's, it just makes sense. So, you know, even if this does end up, you know, this does end up being a Batman vs. Superman movie, it only makes sense that Superman would win, but they're not going to go that route at all because Batman's the more popular character and, you know, we're going to have Batman win because, hey, he's the more popular character and he's the guy that's making more money than Superman movies or, you know, Green Lantern movies or whatever. So, if they do have this be a Batman versus Superman movie and they do have Batman win against a fight with Superman... That's going to be a crock of shit. Um, if they do a straight-up adaptation of the fight from Dark Knight Returns, then maybe, you know, I'll understand it a little bit more because it does make sense why he wins in there, although it's a really unfair fight. Um, but if they just have Batman win against a fight with Superman and it's an equal match, Batman having no kryptonite or no outside help against fighting Superman and they have Batman win, you know, anyways, then I'm just going to... That's just a crock of shit, okay? That's just a giant crock of shit and bullshit. And it's going to really piss me off. It's going to piss off a lot of fans. But I don't think they're going to have either Bat Batman or Superman win. I don't think they're going to have either of them win because 
that's a kind of a running trend with versus movies. They don't, they make it very vague who wins. Like, look at something like Freddy versus Jason. Like, they don't really make it clear if it was Jason that won the fight or Freddy won the fight. It's very vague. Or how even King Kong versus Godzilla. They don't at all say, you know, if King Kong won the fight or Godzilla won the fight. So, maybe that's the way that they'll go here. Um, I could see them setting up that Batman would win the fight, but then it's big plot twist that Superman wins the fight. But I do think that they're going to favor Batman winning the fight over Superman because, again, you know, Batman's a more popular character at the moment. So I think they'll favor Batman winning over Superman winning, um, which, again, I think is total bullshit. I think in a fair fight, you know, Superman would kick the shit out of Batman. And this is, that's a lot coming from me because, again, big Batman fan right here. So that's a lot coming from me. Um, so that's one of my main concerns with this movie. I do not want it to be a versus movie. I don't want it to be a Batman versus Superman movie. And even if it's going to be that, Superman versus Batman, okay? This is a Superman film. This is a Man of Steel sequel first, a Batman um, film second. So that's what I want it to be. I don't want it to be a versus movie. I want it to be a world's finest movie. If you really do want to work, just call it World's Finest, but if you want to work in, um, you know, Batman, Superman, the title, which I don't at all, you know, blame them for wanting to put the Batman and Superman, those words, in the title, because that alone is going to get people to the theater. It doesn't matter about the plot, it doesn't matter about who's in the movie, who's playing the characters, you just put Batman, Superman in the title, people are immediately going to go, going to go see it, excuse me, but, um, people are going to go see it, like, immediately. It's going to immediately make like a bill, over a billion dollars. Batman, Superman, the title, by all means. But how about call it World Finest, colon, Batman, and Superman, or Superman, Batman, colon, World Finest. Just makes sense. I mean, they are the World's Finest. So, I don't want it to be a versus movie. You know, just call it, a, if you're not going to have it be a versus movie, then have it be called World's Finest. But this is just the, the title that, you know, the rumor title for right now, which I so do not hope is the actual title that will end up, you know, being in the movie. But, you know, production does start on the movie next month, so maybe we'll find out in maybe a couple weeks or maybe next month, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I don't want it to be called Batman vs. Superman. That's one of my biggest concerns with this movie right now. Just please do not be call it Batman vs. Superman. I don't want it to be called Batman vs. Superman. If it does end up being a Superman, uh, yeah, Batman, Superman fighting movie, Superman vs. Versus, and then Batman second. Please have the consideration to call it that. Um, and now we get to some of the casting news, which is like 90% of the rumors that have populated the internet about this movie. That's the thing about this movie that have really pissed me um, off. Like, every single day there is a new rumor, a new piece of information about Batman vs. Superman. Every single day. It's not even an exaggeration. And some of these claims are some of the most bogus and some of the most ridiculous news and rumors I've ever heard in my life. Like, I can literally make up a rumor about this movie and odds are it will be true like okay i'll make up something right now uh ben affleck wants larry david to be in batman vs superman i am totally not making that up that is a actually true rumor that is on the internet right now about this movie ben affleck wants larry david to be in this movie you know who would he play i don't know maybe alfred that's that'd be pretty cool that'd be really cool actually i'd see that movie I would imagine him playing Mr. Mitziath Pitwick, the, the, the little imp from the third dimension that plagues Superman and just pisses off Superman. Uh, it's kind of like Batmite. I expect them maybe to voice him, but I don't see how they could work a, a really so, silly Silver Age character into this, you know, dark and gritty and Christopher Nolan Superman universe. I don't see how they could at all work that in. Uh, maybe Alfred. I'll give it that. Maybe Alfred. Um... But, um, one of the little casting announcements that have come up about this movie is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, um, not only being associated with this movie, it's not, it's not, he didn't make it clear if he was going to be in this movie or future Marvel movies, but it's pretty, it's pretty certain that he's just going to be included in future Marvel movies, uh, future DC movies, I apologize, and not, um, this particular Batman vs. Superman movie, um, really don't know at this point what he who he's going to play um people have been saying that they want him to play john stewart green lantern 
I, no, I don't think that's, no, um, not at all. I, I think he's too big. Like, the dude is too ripped. He's, I n never thought I could hear that in my entire life, but the dude looks, he's too ripped to play John Stewart Green Lantern. It just seems odd. Like, it seems like the spandex will, like, rip anytime he slightly moves. The dude is that ripped. I never knew I could say that in my entire life. Oh, the, the, he's too ripped. He's too incredibly fit to play a superhero. Like, the dude looks like a superhero. Don't get me wrong. The dude looks like a superhero. It's only ideal to have him be put in a superhero costume. Because the dude looked like a fucking superhero action figure and whatever. But, as John Stewart Green Lantern, I don't think so. Now, what I do, th who I do think he should play, Black Adam from Shazam or from Captain Marvel. The dude was going to play Black Adam from Shazam or from Captain Marvel in a Captain Marvel slash Shazam movie, a live action movie, like way back in 2006. So, you know, why not, you know, crack that idea open and have him play Captain, uh, you know, uh, Black Adam in a Shazam movie? I, that, like, look at the dude. He looks like Black Adam from, you know, the Shazam comics and from the, you know, Captain Marvel comics. So, I think it's only ideal to have him, you know, play. Black Adam, not John Stewart Green Lantern, but, you know, you know, Black Adam, or another big, you know, bulky, you know, uh, big villain. I think he should play a villain. I just don't think he has the acting chops to play, you know, John Stewart Green Lantern. Just like The Rock is John Stewart Green Lantern. No, I don't think so. I just don't think he has the acting chops. He looks way too ripped, way too big. It just seems, like, ridiculous. Um, so I don't hope that they um, choose him play John Stewart Green Lantern. There's a rumor going around that Denzel Washington is going to be playing John Stewart Green Lantern. That, yeah, totally. I think there's there's only two actors right now that I think could play perfectly John Stewart Green Lantern. You know, Denzel Washington and Idris Elba, who plays Heimdall in the Thor movies, the blind gatekeeper dude, but Marvel probably has somewhere in their contract saying, if you go anywhere near Warner Brothers in their DC movies, we will castrate you. No. There's, I bet you there's somewhere in that contract because Jamie Alexander was going to play Wonder Woman. Now Gail Doe's playing Wonder Woman. Um, so I have a feeling that it's probably Marvel saying, you know what? You're not going to Marvel. You're not going to DC. You're staying here with Marvel, baby. Marvel, baby. So I don't... Um, so I think this is a great idea. Um, Denzel Washington as John Stewart Green Lantern. Perfect idea. Perfect casting in my opinion. And I'm so glad that that means that they're completely dropping that bullshit, horrible Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. Thank God. Um, so that's something I'm really ha happy about. Um, also, in other casting news for this movie, um, Jason Momoa, who was from, who played Conan and Conan, the, that horrible, shitty Conan the Barbarian remake slash reboot, whatever it was supposed to be, um, he's rumored to play a role. In this movie, well, he was rumored. Now it's come out that he's not a part of this movie. Although, you know, that may change later. You know, maybe they're just saying that and they'll, they'll announce, oh yeah, he's playing, you know, so-and-so. Um, and some rumors have said that he will be playing Lobo in uh, the, either this movie or in future DC movies. That'd be great. The main man Lobo from the, you know, Lobo comics and, you know, DC comics. I think he'd be perfect for that. I mean, just look at the dude and then imagine him in practical, you know, black and white makeup. It only makes sense. Like, he really does look like he could pull off Lobo very, very well. And it'd be just great to see a live-action Lobo after so long of waiting for a live-action Lobo. I would love to see that. Just, you know, get some white makeup and an intergalactic motorcycle and we're off on a great fucking movie. That would be an awesome movie. Or he would just be great to see in any other movie, even if it was a cameo in another DC movie. I would love to see a Lobo, a live-action Lobo, played by him. But apparently um, it has come out that he's not a part of DC. It was just a big rumor. Or at least he's not part of this movie and he's part of future DC movies. But we'll, I don't think we'll know for you know a couple weeks or just a very, very long time. Um, and then we also have rumors of... Um, the casting for our main villain in the movie, um, which hasn't been confirmed if Lex Luthor is going to be our main villain in the movie, but all signs are pointing to, yeah, Lex Luthor is going to be our main villain in the movie. And I don't absolutely hate this idea because Man of Steel did a great job, you know, setting up Lex Luthor as the villain in the next Man of Steel Superman movie. So it only makes sense that they would have Lex Luthor be the villain in this movie. And also there's a rumor that there's going to be a second villain in that movie, so that's fine. And I will be getting to that villain in a minute. And I do have some complaints about it. But the casting, some of the 
casting rumors that we have for Lex Luthor or, you know, yeah, Lex Luthor in this movie is either Brian Cranston or Joaquin Phoenix. Yes, Joaquin Phoenix as Lex Luthor. Um, um, the, the, there was a rumor a while back when, like, I think in, like, September or whatever, um, that Brian Cranston was rumored to play Lex Luthor, and I just want to say right here, guys, I think that is a great idea. Like, there's a lot of people right now really debating whether or not they are going to see this movie and are getting really pissed off with a lot of the decisions that are being made about this movie. If you go ahead and you choose Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor, I assure you that will get all the big fans that have, you know, knots in their panties definitely going to this theater. Definitely going to the theater and seeing this movie. I mean, I know I will. Like, even if they make the dumbest decision possible with this movie, I will still see it because Brian Cranston is playing Lex fucking Luther. I mean, we all know at this point that Brian Cranston can play pretty much any character ever. He's a completely versatile actor. I mean, just look at him in any episode of Breaking Bad and you know, oh, fuck yeah, he'll play a great Lex Luthor. Um, I mean, he was like bald throughout 90% of that that show, so put two and two together. He perfect Lex Luthor. Um, you know, just get rid of the glasses, get rid of the goatee, you know, perfect Lex Luthor. I, however, think he would have played a much, way better live-action Commissioner Gordon. I already am aware that he did play Commissioner Gordon in the Batman Year One animated adaptation, but I think he should definitely go from the animated version to a live-action version. And again, look at him in, well, actually the earlier episode of Breaking Bad where he has his glasses and his little mustache. He looks a lot like Commissioner Gordon, and the voice is very distinctive and sounds like Commissioner Gordon, so... I would personally like to see him also as Commissioner Gordon, but I would also very much, I would not at all mind him being cast as Lex Luthor. I think that would be a great decision for him to be cast as Lex Luthor. It's a great idea. Then we have Joaquin Phoenix as Lex Luthor, which I think is much like Ben Affleck, when it, much like if they do announce that Joaquin Phoenix is going to be cast as Lex Luthor, I'm afraid it's going to be a lot like when Ben Affleck was cast as Batman, where it's like, I mean, yeah, it's not a horrible decision, at least my opinion, but there's just so many other actors I can think of that could be, uh, you know, better for the role, and it just doesn't, you can't really see them playing it because they're Joaquin Phoenix. Like, I can't see Joaquin Phoenix playing Lex Luthor because, well, he's Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, it's nothing against him, you know, at all. I mean, he's a fine actor, but it's just... He's such a big name, such a most, such a well-known actor. It just seems odd to have him play Lex Luthor. It's very weird. Like some actors, I don't think can play certain roles because they're just so well known, and that it would seem very strange and just very weird that they're playing that character. Again, with Ben Affleck as Batman, it's like he's such a, such a he's such a well-known actor. It's like really Ben Affleck as Batman. I mean, I'll give it a shot, but it's just such a weird choice, especially when there's so many other choices that would be great for Batman and that seemed more fitting for Batman. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, I don't think is a horrible decision. And I've actually seen some pictures of him bald, like from a couple of years back. And he kind of does look a little bit like Lex Luthor um, in some photographs. Um, uh, so maybe, but it's definitely going to have some backlash and probably some people will have his back, but I will have the, you know, the knee jerk reaction of, it's Joaquin Phoenix as Lex Luthor. It's going to be kind of weird to see, but I'll give it a shot. Um, don't think it's a horrible decision, but it's a very odd, very strange decision. Kind of like Ben Affleck being cast as Batman. Um, and now we get to like my main reason for wanting to make this video. The main thing I wanted to get to, which is um, uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is pretty much as been officially confirmed and officially announced to make an appearance in this movie and it's not that she's going to have a big like a major role like people are really making Wonder Woman out in this movie to have like, a huge major like dynamic role in the movie when that's not at, at all the case um Wonder Woman is just going to have a cameo appearance in this movie um very similar to like like say Black Widow in Iron Man 2, or maybe Hawkeye in Thor, where, you know, they were just there, like, oh, hey, I'm Hawkeye, or hey, I'm Black Widow, whatever. Um, um, Gil Gadot has been officially cast 
as Wonder Woman. Um, before I get to why I think Wonder Woman being in this movie is a bad idea, I want to talk about her casting decision. Um, I don't think it's a horrible decision. And I'm only saying that because I have never seen a movie with a Gail Godot er, in it. Or Gail Godot, however you pronounce it. I say Godot, so I'm just going to Godot with that. <laughs> um, I have never seen a movie with her ever. I just ever. I haven't seen uh, Fast, and, Fast and Furious 5 or 6 or, you know, whatever. Haven't seen any of those movies. Haven't seen any of her other work. Don't know anything about her, don't know if she's a good actress, don't know if she's a bad actress. Um, so this could really go either way. Kind of like with Ben Affleck, it can go really either way at this point. It could either be really bad or really good. However, I think there are so many other actresses that could have played Wonder Woman so much better and would have been so much more fitting for the role of Wonder Woman. And... That's really the thing about this cast that I am really sad to say about so far. Like, it's not horrible casting decision, but there's just so many other actors that could have been way more fitted for the role. You know, with Batman, with Ben Affleck as Batman, it's like, you know, there's so many other actors that could have been chosen for Batman. There's so many other actors that would have been more fitting for Batman. You know, same thing here. There's so many other actresses I can think of that would have been so much better for Wonder Woman. Um, Michelle Rodriguez, Colby Smulders, uh, Jimmy Alexander, like I mentioned, she was going, she was pretty much rumored to play Wonder Woman. She was about to be confirmed as Wonder Woman, but again, I'm pretty sure Marvel was like, you know, no. Get back here, Jamie. You're here at Marvel. Even if it is in a small role in the Thor movies, you're still over here at Marvel. You signed those contracts. You're not going to DC or Warner Brothers. Um, you know, Colby Smulders, like I mentioned, Jamie Alexander. Um, I think there's so many actresses that could have been... You know, Gina Carano! Gina Carano is dating Henry Cavill, who's playing Superman. Don't you think DC and Warner Brothers would have said to themselves, you know what, maybe... The guy, maybe the chick that Superman is dating should be, you know, Wonder Woman. I mean, she has all the physical qualifications and acting chops to play her. So, maybe we should... Oh, Gail Doe! She was in a Fast and Furious movie. We gotta put her in this movie. And if that's really the case, well, again, why wasn't Michelle Rodriguez chosen? I think she would have been a much better Wonder Woman. Um, much more fitting, at least when, at least if it was announced that Michelle Rodriguez is playing Wonder Woman, I can say to myself, well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And I'm not at all pissed off of, pissed off at Gal Gadot being cast as Wonder Woman because, oh, she's too skinny and oh, her boobs aren't big enough. That's, that's a legit, okay, let's, a le quote unquote legitimate complaint. It's a complaint by people, but it's not a legitimate complaint to say that Gal Gadot is not qualified to play Wonder Woman. Um, it's like, who gives this shit? Like, like, you know, like, people are saying that she's too skinny to play Wonder Woman. And at first, when I looked at some of her pictures, I, yeah, I did look at some Gail Gadot pictures. I was doing research. What? I wasn't doing anything else. What the fuck are you talking about? Anyways, um, when, uh, it was announced that Gail Gadot was playing Wonder Woman, people were saying that she was, you know, too skinny, you know, too scrawny to play Wonder Woman. It's called ex it's called working out. It's called building muscle. Actors do that to play certain roles in movies when they are cast. Chris Pratt did it when he was cast as Star Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy. Hell, Henry Cavill did that when he was cast as Superman. Even um, Michael Shannon did it when he was cast as General Zod. They all did that. They all went through training to play these certain roles. So she just has to pump a lot of iron. She just has to do, you know, a lot of push-ups, just get a lot of, you know, just build up muscle, and I think she'll, you know, look good as Wonder Woman, but I just, I, I, there's so many other actresses that would have been so much more qualified to play Wonder Woman, and I just cannot, I just hate this casting decision. I really, really do. It just seems like, you know, it really does seem like they just want to get a Justice League movie off the ground as fast as they possibly can. So instead of taking their time and getting actors and actresses that can really, really bring a lot of things to the table in terms of these characters, they're just they're snatching up actors as fast as they possibly can. You know, with Ben Affleck being cast as Batman, I can get him a slide. But I just can't with Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. There's just so many other actresses that can do such, you know, that could have done... It's been so much more fitting for the role, but the movie's not even out yet, so I will, of course, give her a chance. Especially because 
I have not seen any of her movies. So, you never know. I mean, Heath Ledger wasn't, you know, entirely, you know, uh, he, he wasn't entirely accepted as, you know, the Joker when it was announced that he would play the Joker in The Dark Knight, and, well, can we really say at this point that he did a bad job? Not really. Unless you want to be crucified. So, yeah. Um, so, Gail Gadot is Wonder Woman. It's not that she's... that I hate the casting decision. It's not entirely the fault of the casting decision. Not entirely. My main problem with Wonder Woman in this Batman and Superman movie is the fact that she's in this Batman and Superman movie. The Batman, it's a Batman and Superman movie. I think that they, a Batman and Superman movie can with, can hold up their own movie. I don't think you have to throw in Wonder Woman into the mix just to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm pretty sure Batman and Superman in the same movie can hold its own. You don't need to throw Wonder Woman into the mix to get it interesting. It's already interesting enough. It's Batman and Superman. So, you know, my main problem with Wonder Woman is not with the casting, it's just Wonder Woman in general with um, her being included in this movie. Um, I do not want her to be in this movie. And my main problem is she's not a main player in this movie. She's not a main character in this movie. She's, from what I know so far, she's just going to be a, have a cameo role in the movie. Um, which... At first, I was thinking to myself, oh, cool, she's just going to have a cameo role in this movie, and that will set up, you know, like a future, you know, Wonder Woman solo movie. Okay, that's fine, you know, whatever. That's not the case. At all. This is going to be her introduction to this, you know, DC Cinematic Universe, yeah, right? Um, yeah, it, that's structure as a universe, yeah. It's really structured, let me tell you. Um, it's horribly structured, this, this DC Cinematic Universe. Um... But, uh, my main problem is, uh, she's going to have a cameo role in this movie, and it's not going to set up a, J a Wonder Woman solo movie, but that's going to be her introduction to this cinematic universe, and that's going to be her introduction and her only thing to do with this DC Cinematic Universe into a Justice League movie. And... I honestly, when that I found that out, I really wanted to cry. Now, this is just a rumor at the moment. In fact, everything that I say in this video, I'm talking about in this video, is really just a rumor at this point. But if this rumor is true, I have lost all respect and all hope for future DC movies. Well, I still will probably see the future DC movies. Yeah, but I'm not going to get excited in the, for with them. I'm not going to talk about them or advertise them freely like I do right now. Um, I just want to get, I just want to get this clear to you guys, okay? I, I really, really want to clarify this right here. I don't really give a shit about any future Batman movies. I do not really give a shit about any future Superman movies. Even though I'm doing this video, apparently. Um, I don't give a shit about either of these two characters' future live-action movies because... We've seen these characters enough already in live action form. We've seen them, you know, we Batman's had like eight movies, Superman has had uh first Superman, second Superman, third, fourth, it's six movies. We've seen these characters enough. DC has been doing live action movies since 1978 since the first Superman movie, and the only characters that they have done successful movies on is a Batman and Superman movie since 1978. That's pathetic. This, these characters have seen the silver screen numerous times already. We've already seen what they can bring to the table. We've already seen what they can do to movies. If there's any character that I give a shit about when it comes towards a live action movie, and if there's any character that I want a live action movie to happen to, it's fucking Wonder Woman. It's Wonder Woman that deserves the live action movie. And ironically, she's the only character in this DC Cinematic Universe, yeah right, that is not getting that. And to be quite honest, that just shows you these people have no respect for this character, Wonder Woman. No respect at all.
In fact, if you want to see a movie with a lot of respect and has a lot of faith and is very faithful to the character of Wonder Woman, go and buy this movie because this is worth every single last penny that you own. This movie is the definitive Wonder Woman movie by far. It's only 10 bucks at like my local Target or whatever. I found it's at Target, so it's probably only 10 bucks at your Target too. So it is definitely, it's definitely worth more than that. I mean, this movie is great. And if you really want to see a movie that's faithful and respectful to the character of Wonder Woman, you know, what she deserves, watch this movie because it's fucking brilliant. Great Wonder Woman movie. This made me a fan of Wonder Woman, as any adaptation should make me a fan of. So, the fact that they are not having a solo film for Wonder Woman, and not a proper introduction to Wonder Woman, they're just resorting her to a mere cameo, I think is the most disrespectful thing that can be done to this character. I mean, just the most disrespectful thing ever. Next to giving her rubber nipples, but then again, she's a female, so that would make sense giving her rubber nipples, but I digress. Um, it's just the most disrespectful thing to do to this character. Wonder Woman is the most prominent character in the DC Universe. One of the founding members of the Just League. One of the most prominent char female heroines in comic books in general. One of the most remarkable and looked up to and respected female characters, probably in all of literature and all of media. So, the fact that they're not giving her her own movie and, are just, and is just resorting her to a walk-by cameo in a Batman and Superman movie is the most disrespectful thing that I can possibly think of when it comes towards this character. In fact, the way I think of it um, with this movie, with the Batman vs. Superman movie, and um, the rumors that she is going to just have a mere cameo in the movie, the way I think of that is the same way that Nick Fury was done in Iron Man 2, where he wasn't at all introduced, he wasn't at all developed as a character, he just showed up and spouted exposition and walked out and was never to be seen again until the Avengers movie. That's the same way I feel Wonder Woman is going to be done in this movie, and again, incredibly disrespectful to a character that deserves nothing but respect for. Why do that? I, that's what I think of when I think of Wonder Woman in this movie. They're just going to have her walk in. Now, I'll introduce who she is or why she's here. Just have her spout exposition and then walk away, never to be seen until a Justice League movie. And if that's the case, I'm not going to see a fucking Justice League movie. Okay, I'm really on the fence of seeing a Justice League movie because all of the stuff is laid out right here that this is just made just to get a Justice League movie off the ground. There have been even more rumors that Green Lantern, like I mentioned, and Aquaman, and The Flash, and Martian Manhunter, although I am glad that they're doing the original roster of the Justice League that first appeared in The Brave and the Bold. Um, I mean, if they really do want to one-up Marvel in any case, I do consider that a really good one-up because Marvel kind of fucked up when they chose the members of the Avengers in their Avengers movie because they left out Wasp and Ant-Man. But now they have all their original members that were in the first appearance of the Justice League. So I guess that's kind of a cool one-up. But all of these characters are rumored to be played, to be shown off in cameo appearances in this movie. I'm starting to just think, and this is what pretty much everyone is thinking, but I'm starting to just think that this movie is go just a giant top-secret Justice League movie, not an actual Batman and Superman movie. Like, it, it was first announced as, oh, this is going to be a Batman-Superman movie. Oh, wait, this is going to be a Batman-Superman movie with Wonder Woman in it. Oh, this is going to be a Batman-Superman with Wonder Woman movie with Aquaman, The Flash, Martian Manhunter, and everybody else in this movie because, hey, we really want to get a Justice League movie off the ground because the Avengers made a shit trillion dollars, so we're going to rush out a Justice League movie because we really want money, too. Try saying that ten times fast. The Flash could probably do it, but I really can't. Um, this is just embarrassing. It really, really, really is. Like, way back in 2012 when um, Avengers first came out, and this was the main reason why I did my thoughts on a Just League video, but Warner Brothers in DC announced that they were going to be doing a Just League movie. It would be out in the year 2015. Guess when Batman Superman comes out? 2015. So again, I'm really just thinking that this movie is just a giant top secret Just League movie with the gauze and mask of a Batman and Superman movie. I really would, if that's the case, when this movie, 
later um, next month is a now uh, you know some production the production it uh, it goes into production and we probably do get our official title it's just league I'm not seeing it I know that's really sacrilegious from my um in where I'm from where I'm standing but I care more about these characters and I am more faithful to these characters and love these characters more than seeing them being sold out and just manipulated in these horrible, horrible movies. I loved Man of Steel. I loved it. I loved it. I made a whole hour-long review of just saying how much I loved it. But I'm going to lose so much respect for that movie if this is the case that they're going. It's obvious. I know I'm not an idiot. I know that they're just making these movies just to get a Just League movie off the ground. But I want to really have some faith in these. I really, really do. I have some faith in these movies, but... God damn, these are some stupid ass decisions. And there's also another horrible rumor out there. This is just a rumor at the moment, but if it does turn out to be true, I'm not even going to see this Batman Superman movie. That Wonder Woman is going to be a Kryptonian in the movie. Which right there just shows you they don't give a shit about Wonder Woman in this movie. They're just throwing her in here because, hey, Wonder Woman is a big character that some people will recognize if we throw her in this movie, then she'll make a, then the movie will make a shit zillion dollars. And they say to themselves, oh wait, we got, we're got we putting Wonder Woman in the movie? We don't know shit about Wonder Woman. Uh, make her like Superman. Which, if you're going to make Wonder Woman Kryptonian in the movie, you might as well just have it be Supergirl. Because, you know, she's Kryptonian too. And you already kind of set her up in um, Man of Steel with the open uh, the cryo tube in the scout ship. So, yeah, why not just make it fucking Supergirl if you're going to make Wonder Woman Kryptonian? Just goes against everything, all the mythology, all of the the legacy of Wonder Woman as a character, the whole Amazonian uh, Amazonian princess, the whole Greek mythology part of it is just all gone. The most interesting things about the character, the most original things about the character, is completely gone and, and wiped away from this existence. So now we're gonna have a Kryptonian Superwoman Wonder Woman. It's like, what's the point of having Wonder Woman be in the movie anymore? Again, why not just use Supergirl? If this is the case, if they do end up with Wonder Woman being Kryptonian in this movie, I'm not gonna see the movie. I will not. I, I will not talk about it anymore. I will not advertise it. I will not talk about it. I just won't see the fucking movie. Cause I have more respect for these characters than seeing them. I have way more respect for these characters, and I love these characters so much that I don't want to see them being manipulated and just fucking destroyed on film. I don't want to see that. I love these characters. I love Wonder Woman as a character. I love Superman as a character. I love Batman as a character. I love Man, uh, Martian Manhunter, The Flash, Green Lantern as characters. I don't want to see them all fucked up into one movie just because the Avengers made a lot of money, so we want to have a lot of money too. Well, the reason why the Avengers made a lot of money was because they took their time, you know, building up to the Avengers. They took their time developing their characters and letting us grow with these characters and really making us love these characters. With you in your movies, you're just crowbarring characters in the movie just to justify your Justice League movie. No pun intended. So, if that's your case, then I'm not going to see a fucking Justice League movie. And, you know, I may just be one person that may not make a big dent in the movie, but at least I stayed faithful to the characters that I grew up and loved very, very much. Um... And that, you know, that makes me happy, at least, a little bit inside. Um, so, Wonder Woman's inclusion in this movie is absolutely fucking horrible. I think her inclusion in this movie should just be completely scrapped, whether or not it is an actual big role or a small, minimal cameo role, um, and just be given her own movie with her own story and her own origin, you know, like this movie, in fact, DC, if you're really that desperate at this point to have a Just League movie be made, just adapt this then. I mean, yeah, it's a cop-out, but if you're really that desperate, then at least do this. Because at least we do, you know, get a good Wonder Woman movie in live-action form. You know, something that she has needed for so many years. This character has existed since 1941 and has yet to receive a live-action movie. There's going to be one at one point with Joss Whedon writing it. Why was that n never made? And again, DC, Warner Brothers, if you're really that desperate to get a Just League movie off the ground, then crack open that script that Joss Whedon wrote, pay him a fucking royalty check, and make that fucking movie. Or, you know, again, or make this fucking movie, because you're really that, you're, you are that desperate at this point that you might as well just re make this in live action form, just bigger and better. Have Warren Montgomery fucking direct it. She directed that, so 
have her direct it, please. Because she definitely has showed that she has a lot of respect for that character. And get Gail Simone to write it. These are two people that have a lot of respect for Wonder Woman. Have them make a fucking Wonder Woman movie. Have them write all the stuff that has Wonder Woman in this Batman vs. Superman movie. Have their own little writing process on in certain parts of your of these movies. Because you guys obviously don't know what the fuck you're doing with Wonder Woman as a character. I have so much respect for Wonder Woman as a character. She is one of the most prominent female characters in all of existence. To have her just be reduced to this is so degrading and just so disrespectful. And I really want there to be a good Wonder Woman movie because this will give females a big role model to look up to. Because females these days, they don't really have role models to look up to. Like people say, oh, what about Kim Kardashian? Just, no. You know... It, this will give females a big role model to look up to, to aspire to be, to, you know, to be great. Just, it will give them something to look up to. It will be a big role model for little girls and, you know, just girls and females, women of all ages. And it will also get women, you know, just general movie-going women into comic books. And we'll get general movie-going women into Wonder Woman comic books. And this will introduce them to that character Wonder Woman. So that's something that I really want a, a Wonder Woman movie to be made as opposed to having her just be a cameo role in a movie because it will just open up a huge floodgate to just so many opportunities for the character Wonder Woman. You know, and this, and if you really do it good, it can be the first live-action superhero movie with a main female protagonist, a, a female protagonist as the main character. You know, there's never been one of those. Like, Supergirl sucked ass, Catwoman sucked major ass, Elektra sucked super major ass. All three movies with, you know, three main, um, you know, three superhero movies with female protagonists and female um, main characters, you know, all sucked. So this could be your opportunity, DC, to make a Wonder Woman movie that's really good. And it could be your opportunity and your time to shine and make the first really good female superhero comic book movie. The very first one. First great one. So that's why I want a Wonder Woman movie to be made. And I had this character be degraded to a fucking cameo role. That's bullshit. That is just absolute bullshit. Um, another last little piece of news before I go is one of the other um, uh, villains that's rumored to be in this movie is Doomsday. You heard me right. Doomsday is rumored to be played in this movie. In fact, it's actually a really big rumor and might as well at this point be considered confirmed and true. Yes, Doomsday. Doomsday. This Doomsday. Doomsday killed Superman. I think this is total bullshit. I think that's a horrible, horrible idea. I think Superman... I think this is too big of a character to just be shoved into the second movie. The second Superman movie. I think save him for a third Superman movie. Because if you throw him in this movie, it's going to make people wonder, oh, Doomsday is going to be in this movie. I wonder if they're going to do the Death of the Superman story or the Reign of the Superman story or the Return of the Superman story, which is not at all what they're going to do because they're already juggling too many plot lines with Batman fighting Superman, Batman Superman fighting Lex Luthor, Batman Superman and Wonder Woman teaming up and all the Just League and all that other stuff. It's... Too much, so of course they're not going to get to a Death of Superman story if they're going to have Doomsday in this movie. So if you're not going to get to Doomsday's main story, the, the, the story that the character is known for, then why throw him in this movie? Why not just wait, save him for a future fucking movie, like a third Superman movie, and have that, that whole movie be the death and return of Superman? It just doesn't make any sense at all. Why Doomsday? Why not just another big villain like fucking Metallo? Which I've been saying, why not Metallo already? Like, how, here's your plot. Have Lex Luthor manufacture, uh, you know, mass produce a shit ton of Metallo robots with kryptonite in their chest. Boom, there you go. It's something that Superman has to go up against that he needs Batman's help for. You know, I know that they want to get a big villain because it only makes sense to get a really big villain because Batman and Superman need to team up. They're not going to team up over a small villain, so of course they have to team up, you know, against a big villain and a smaller primary villain. But Doomsday is too big of a villain. It's the same thing I said when Darkseid was going to be the main villain in the first Justice League movie. It's like, no, he should not be the main villain in the first Justice League movie. He should be the villain in a, th a third Justice League movie. Or if you really want a second Justice League movie, but really a third Justice League movie. Having Dark Doomsday be the main, one of the main villains in the second Superman movie 
It's total and utter bullshit. You're gonna have that character in your movie only if you do the death of Superman story. And honestly, that only seems fitting for a third Superman movie, so not even a second Superman movie if you're doing the death of Superman story. So, it's just bullshit. Don't have him in the second movie. He's too big of a villain. Have him be saved for a third Superman movie. The whole Doomsday Death of Superman story arc would fill its own movie. Maybe two movies. So, I don't want to see him in this movie. I really hope that he's not in this movie. I mean, I'm glad that they're choosing bigger Superman villains that have not been done in live action form yet. But, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that, that villain in this Superman Batman movie. So... That's all I got. Uh, another one hour video. That's horrible. I, I apologize, but, um, had a lot to say about this, but, um, I'll see you guys the rest of that year. If the rest of the videos are like this, then I'm going to shoot myself today, so I'll see you guys soon. Um, Batman vs. Superman movie. I was really excited for it at first, and now I'm really dreading it and I'm really afraid about it. So, um, yeah. Fine.